Hello everyone, in this video, we're going to learn how to build a calendar spread. The calendar spread is an option strategy that is widely used in the trading world. What's more, when interviewing for positions as a trader or quant trader, you're regularly asked to describe the construction of this strategy. This is even truer for internships. In the previous video on implied volatility, I explained that implied volatility can be interpreted as the volatility expected by the market for the underlying asset. As a reminder, implied volatility is obtained by using the observed market price of the option. Then, using a pricing model such as the Black Schools model, we deduce the implied volatility of the model for the underlying asset. This implied volatility corresponds to the volatility that would have had to be used in the model to observe the current market prices. It is therefore different from historical or realized volatility, as explained in the last video. Implied volatility is a reflection of the option price. It is sometimes considered that the price observed on the markets corresponds to the equilibrium price for an asset. This price corresponds to the consensus between buyers and sellers. So, as with prices, there is an implied volatility equilibrium for options. Remember that financial assets are priced so that discounted future earnings correspond to the price observed today. If we consider an option with T minus T remaining, the implied volatility observed at time T corresponds to the realized volatility that the asset must have during the remainder of the option's life for the present value of the payoff to equal the price. And this is why we interpret implied volatility as the expected future volatility. If implied volatility is 20%, then the market expects the underlying asset to have a volatility of 20% over the life of the option. 20% is the volatility that make the expected payoff equal to the price. As presented in the previous video, the impact of the variation of the implied volatility on the price of the option is measured by the Greek vega. On the other hand, realized volatility is the actual volatility of the asset over the life of the option. It is simply calculated by taking the standard deviation of the asset's returns over the period. To understand how to trade volatility, let's take a look at Vega and Gamma. Vega corresponds to the variation in option price as a function of implied volatility. Gamma represents the delta variation as a function of the underlying price and corresponds to the second derivative of the option price to the underlying price. Let's see how to interpret the sign of Vega and Gamma during a trade. Suppose you have a portfolio and you are Vega positive. This means that if implied volatility rises, your PL rises. Being long Vega means that you make money if the underlying moves more over the lifetime of the option than what was originally expected. If you're gamma positive, then you'll make money if the price of the underlying moves, either positively or negatively. So you make money if volatility is high. To understand this, let's take the Taylor expansion of an option price. In this decomposition, we obtain the variation of the option price as a function of the Greeks. We see that for gamma, the price variation of the underlying is squared. So whatever the direction of variation of the underlying is, this variation will generate PNL if gamma is positive. So, after these definitions, you understand that if you want to trade a rise of realized volatility of an asset, you need to be long gamma. As you can see, being short gamma is not desirable because a price movement will generate a loss. In reality, market players who wish to be short gamma are traders who use income generation strategies. The principle of these strategies is to harvest premiums by going short vanilla options or option strategies that are gamma positive. You exchange your risk for a premium. So in this video, we're only interested in the positive gamma scenario. Concerning Vega, if we think that implied volatility will fall during the life of the option, we'll go short Vega. So a fall in implied volatility will generate a rise in PL. Otherwise, we'll go long Vega. Let's take the long gamma short Vega example, which is the most complex to construct. As a reminder, a vanilla long call is gamma positive because it's convex, and Vega positive because an increase in volatility means you can finish deeper in the money. The same applies to a long put. We see that being long gamma and long vega is easy 
we simply buy put or call options. To be gamma negative, you need to short vanilla options, but this position is also short vega. We start to see the problem. Clearly, the convexity or concavity of the option expressed by gamma is strongly linked to the sign of vega. As explained before, the convexity is like a protection against downward movements. Considering our current point of view where the time is fixed, it is not possible to have gamma and vega with opposite signs. We therefore realize that our current one-dimensional vision is not sufficient to understand how to make a long gamma and short vega trade. To make such a trade, we need to play with another options variable, time to maturity. Since the beginning, I've been showing you the sign of the Greeks for a fixed time t, but their value varies over time. For gamma, if we consider a long call, we can see that its value increases around the strike price and tends towards zero in the money and out the money. The reason for this is that gamma represents the variation in delta. Since delta is the derivative of the option price in relation to the price of the underlying asset, we can see that delta tends towards a binary profile. A binary function has a theoretically infinite derivative at the jump point. Therefore, gamma tend to infinity at the money. So if we are at the money, a call option with a shorter time to maturity has a higher gamma than the same option with a longer maturity. If it do not make sense for you, I invite you to watch my video about delta and gamma, which explain this concept more clearly. Concerning vega, we understand that if the volatility of the underlying rises, the more time it remains before maturity, the higher is the expected move, and therefore the more chances we have to end far in the money. This means that the more time it remains for an option before maturity, the higher is vega. The conclusion is that, a higher maturity option has a lower gamma and higher vega, and an option near the maturity has higher gamma and lower vega. Therefore, to create our position of long gamma and short vega, we can use a time spread between two options. To be long gamma and short vega, you have to buy an option with a short time to maturity, which will therefore have a high gamma and sell an option with the same strike price, but a longer maturity, which will therefore have a negative vega. By comparing the gamma and vega amplitudes, we can see that gamma 1 minus gamma 2 is positive around the strike price and that vega 1 minus vega 2 is negative. We therefore end up with a strategy where gamma is positive and vega negative. This strategy is called a short calendar spread. A long calendar spread is gamma negative and vega positive. As you can see, this strategy relies on a time spread between options. This is not usual and it is important to understand this simple example to be able to build complex option strategies. I let you some time to think about this strategy. However, a major drawback of this strategy is that it only works if you stay close to at the money. If the price of the underlying asset fluctuates too much, the value of gamma falls rapidly, and we find ourselves with new values to take into account. As the market is dynamic, we end up with new values for gamma and vega. One way to counter this is to use the calendar spread over a very short period of time. For example, at the time of quarterly earnings announcements or federal bank announcements. 